Well, time to do one last stream of this game, even though I'd already completed the... Even though I completed the main playthrough in, like, three parts. But it's like, this clearly isn't all there is. I said as much. I'm gonna be focusing on just doing Julius mode and boss rush. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna get right into it. Oh yeah, and also like in the time uh, in between last stream and now, I did like another New Game Plus run of uh, did a New Game Plus run uh, just uh, with the file we had already finished just to get more souls, level up a bit more. Even did some practice on on boss rush, so I already got two. Yeah, I think it's two of the three. Uh, like boss rush rewards already gone for Soma. I'm probably not gonna get the third one unless I cheese it with like unlimited MP, which is only after grinding for the remaining souls. But whatever, that's not important. Let's just uh Yeah, we're gonna go straight into playing as the one. The only The Incomparable Julius Belmont. Alright. So we got the cross, holy water, axe, grand cross. Yeah, that's basically it. No knives, no stopwatch. Like, uh... Yeah, and he's got the sickest dash where he goes forward then turns around as he just phases in behind you. That is so cool. But yeah, and even with sub-weapons, it's like, uh... He keeps it to the essentials, really. Which is just... Not even so much the essentials, more like just the... The consistently worthwhile sub-weapons to always use. You know, like cross, holy water, axe... And then, like, the red there's for, like... That's for Grand Cross, specifically. <laughs> Yeah, and even his running speed is just... Movement speed is so much faster out the gate. That's cool. Yeah, like, you can tell... Like, I am noticing right away that because of the faster running speed, it makes... It makes running jump attacks feel really good to do, as a result. And if only this rendition of Can't Wait Until Night just played through the entire castle map, instead of just the first section. Because man, I would not get tired of this. Oh, and of course, you can uh, fling it around just by holding the button and then pressing a direction on the D-pad. Cool. Well, let's go. Gonna focus on just doing the bosses in order. Ha! Huh, one holy water. That's all it took. The absolute best. That said, I do kind of wish that, um... Like, I get that obviously Julius does not get access to, like, Hammer Shop or, like, a dedicated pause menu. Because just the start button, if you try pressing it in this mode, it literally does nothing. It doesn't even pause the action. The map screen's, like, your only pause function. And I wish it would just be, like, you know, just... Just fill in the entire map already. Just let me know, like, what all of it is. Overkill? Possibly. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, actually, honestly, it's like the orbs themselves that you pick up from the bosses, those are really the only things that are important if you're playing as Julius, because they give you stat increases that you can't really see just because there's no boss menu. But, like, that's the whole incentive from how I understand it with this mode is that you can go anywhere out the gate, which means you can technically just bolt straight over to the boss uh, to the boss fight with Graham and end it there. But you're going to be so weak just because you don't have... You've not collected the orbs from every other boss beforehand. But still, this is more or less proving exactly what I had always said about, like, these Castlevania games. You know, like, the ones from Symphony onward, and in, in this style, where it's like... I... I like the extra character slash Belmont modes of these games a whole lot more than the actual main playthrough characters. And that's even taking into account, obviously, that, like, you know... Like, in this game, obvi obviously, Soma's fun to play, just because, like, everything to do with his systems and whatever is so polished. But, but, but again, it's like, when you're just rolling, like, a, a Belmont mode or extra character mode in these sort of games, excising the, uh, excising all the RPG elements entirely is way more valuable uh, to me. Just because at the end of the day, I still have more of an appreciation for the classic Vanias because they are pure action. They're simple, but still, again, pure. Okay. Let's see how the cross does, regular. Yeah, not too bad. Creaking Skull was definitely a pushover. Holy shit. At least here, it's like, uh... Even with, uh, this game basically... Hell yeah, Raph, you made it in time. Julius is indeed the GOAT. We're just going through all the bosses again in order before, uh, before heading straight to Graham. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Yeah, this this game is this game has been a good time. Kind of shame for it to be over so soon, but honestly, I'm uh, I'm more looking forward to just kind of if I'm going back to this, it's gonna be like just doing like a hard run mode or another new game plus in my in my spare time. Nice. Yeah, steak sounds real good. Oh, and another nice thing about this, no poison or curse effects from getting hit by certain enemies like the ectoplasm. So appreciated. <laughs> the bloodline became too OP and and like all it took to get to that point was for for the for them to go okay everyone else after Richter 
they can't use the whip anymore. We got we got to store up our energy. <laughs> Just let the let let this other clan take care of things. What the, what are they called? Morris? Yeah, whatever. They 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 can deal with it, I suppose. Oh wait, what's that? Our whip could, like, cannot be used to its full potential by anyone except us? Uh, no, it, we can't. Th this is for our benefit. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I've not actually used the axe yet. I think once I get to the, uh... What is it? The great armor? I'll... I'll see how that goes against it. Might be a bit difficult, depending on if the shield keeps blocking it. Oh, it still hits them, just you gotta be real close. Yeah. That's it, I do, I do feel like, uh, after getting... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can't uh, you can't forget the old like whip flailing. That is that is very important. <laughs> but yeah, it's like I'm thinking you know, but after uh, messing around with uh w uh, with the kit that uh, Julius has here between like his moves, the sub weapons, Specifically with the sub-weapons, I absolutely appreciate that you could just switch between three sub-weapons and an item crash. <laughs> what if there's a vampire standing on your wrist? Oh, the horror. <laughs> but no, it's like, I appreciate how, that this game, like, with Julius mode, you can switch between these things. But it still feels weirdly limited by virtue of the fact that the... That those are the only sub weapons you get as him. Like you don't get the knife or the or the stopwatch. But I could probably see why they limit it to just these because, you know, like stopwatch in classic Vanias have always been super situational, and the uh, and the knives are like, like they are the they are the sub weapon least liked just by virtue of kind of their lack of power and, like, other utility. Because here, instead, you have you have the cross, you have the holy water, and you have the axe. You know, the three other sub-weapons in Classic Vanias that have traditionally seen a lot more use from players just because it's it, it helps them a lot more. <laughs> yeah that yeah that's the yeah that's the part about jesus that like that like the disciples definitely did not uh they were not privy to Still, like, even if it is limited in terms of, like, uh, sub-weapons available, I absolutely do appreciate that you just get all of them off the bat. Because I, I get it from the point of, like, tradition that if you're making a Castlevania game and you have sub-weapons, you have to get them from specific, like, breakable candles and then that you can only carry one. I get that. But at the same time, I do feel like if you really wanted to, like, push the the kind of the pure action side of Classic Vanias even farther, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is value in, like, giving you access to all those tools and, like, being able to freely switch, uh, switch back and forth between them based on the situation.
Okay, so we've already... Ah, yes, that's right. I need to keep heading back up because I just remember the next boss uh, is, like, they're in, like, the uh, this upper section of the uh, of the map. Hold on, can I just? Oh wait! <laughs> yeah! Oh my God! You can hit him! You can hit him from the underside of the bridge just by doing the super jump. That is rad! Holy crap! <laughs> Oh, that was awesome! Julius the Chad! Absolute units! Oh, I love this. Okay, so it wasn't up this tower. I completely blanked on it. God damn it. Yeah, it's another tower. A bit uh, further to the right. Oh. Man, I'm still losing it over that you could do that. <laughs> he may not have to directly punch you, but he can punch stone hard enough that you feel the vibrations and it causes actual damage. Oh. Absolute unit. There's 35 Belmonts running around with 34 different mothers. This Julius just wants to make sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. We're definitely much more powerful now that we can afford to... Like, just slide through axe armors. So, you know, also, um, I can see pro another thing that they probably uh, thought about but decided ultimately not to include, which are, like, the weird, like, fighting game input-esque special moves that you had as, like, Richter in Symphony of the Night. I can see why they probably didn't want to, like, complicate that stuff. In, in here, especially with how much more technically refined it is compared to, like, the loose, kind of the, just, uh, just kind of the weird loose, uh, like, just anything goes kind of uh, uh, approach that they took with Symphony, just going, yeah, like, whatever sounds interesting as a mechanic. But, man, I would have loved if, uh, if Julia is just too further to live by how ratty is if they just gave him, like, extra, like, attack or mobility tools. Yeah, that's true. It's like, everything about this is like, because of the Game Boy Advance's controls, it's a lot simpler and, like, easier. It's more immediate to get to what you need. But I, but even so, like, I, yeah. I, I feel like eventually... I am obviously going to have to get around to playing Richter and Maria mode in Symphony of the Night. Because I really do like the extra, like, attack and movement tools that you have with those characters. Just because they're necessary to get around that freaking castle. <laughs> oh my... You know, that's fair enough. Oh, man. <laughs> to be fair, though, we do... We honestly need more uh, characters in video games who just have the balls to unleash, like, a, a miniature singularity through magic or some nonsense. That's technically something you do in Ninja Gaiden 2, actually, with one of the Nimpo spells. The, uh... Art of the Piercing Void. It describes it as like a small singularity. So Ryu Hayabusa, he totally has no qualms about making a miniature black hole because he knows it is only going to last for like three seconds. But those three seconds are enough to vaporize anything it touches. Oh yeah, that's right. With like one of the finishing moves. that That's true. Okay, 
You get the Grand Cross. <laughs> Ooh, Suchinoko. <laughs> oh, man. God. Is, see, all of this, I think, is why, even if Konami did not handle this franchise so poorly and decide to, like, end it with Lords of Shadow and just screwing over Iga, like, even I'm starting to think that maybe that 1999 game would have been impossible to make as far as living up to the expectations set by this Chad. Because, I mean, it's like... Because obviously the question I guess you have to go with is, like, is this power that Julius has right now, is that indicative of what he had during the 1999 war in his prime? Or did he, or is this what he ended up becoming after killing Dracula and just continued to amass power? Because I feel like the latter is the kind of explanation that they would try and bullshit in order to make the 1999 game work. But even that, I, but I feel like most people would probably not want to, like, accept that as, as the option. Like, you'd almost have to go, like, full, like, bonkers, like, platinum uh, levels of over the top to make it work. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, because at some point, in order to really sell it, you got kind of, kind of like how, uh, how, uh, how Platinum was brought on board by Kojima to, to make Metal Gear Rising. I feel like they probably, if they were, like, chosen uh, by Iga, they probably could have made a rad 1999 Castlevania game. And at least do enough crazy stuff and, like, provide the sense of power to really make it feel like you are playing the most powerful Belmont to date in the final battle with Dracula. Yeah, you know, I think... Yeah, I think that might actually be the thing that works, because I'm remembering, based on, like, the synopsis of stuff that I recall of the other Egovanias prior to this, like, wasn't that the whole thing with Order of Ecclesia, where it's, like, you have, like, a world map with different zones that you go to, but it's, like, it's not set up in a way that's similar to, you know, to, like, Dracula's castle or anything. And, like, the castle itself is what you work your way up to. Yeah. Okay, I gotta remember the, like, when I'm not during in boss battles, I gotta remember to just stop, uh, uh, like, keeping the Grand Cross on because it's kind of pointless unless you're on a really big target. Wait, hold on. I wait. I think I just realized I'm completely like the very top of this has no purpose because it's not getting me closer to the headhunter. I need to head back down. Yeah, it's through here. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, this mode is fun. It's also, like, a case of, like, even though I'm going through the boss orders in pretty much the exact same way, this still gets back to, like, the other thing I like about the Belmont modes and other Egovanias and how it gets back to the sort of thing that has, you know, that I wish more Metroidvanias on the whole would actually bother doing, which is that feeling of you have this, you have this castle, this space to explore, and... And you, in theory, are basically not being limited in what part of the area you want to go in. Because we got everything to, like, do the bosses in any order we want. We could have gone all the way down to the bottom of the castle and fought Legion if we wanted. 
Obviously, it would be, it would be a bit ill-advised because our stats are not at that level of power. But, I, but it's like... Because of, like, the oversaturation this genre has had in the indie scene, it definitely, like, it, uh, like, it has contributed a lot to me, like, getting real tired of what is considered, like, the standard way of doing map and game progression in a Metroidvania. Where it's like, you have this big explorable environment where, like, the real exploration is really only a factor in, like, the second half because you are spending the first... Like, with so little tools to work with. Got him! Felt good about that, about those axe throws. Also, how rad is it that they're able to get away with, like, a boss where the gimmick is that you have to keep cutting off its heads? And this is a Game Boy Advance game. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, like, just finished up the Headhunter. Yeah. Though I guess that also means you kind of missed, like, the, the thing I was going on about with the, uh, where, uh, how Julius mode and, by extension, all the Belmont modes in other, uh, Egovanias. <laughs> Fair enough. I know I, I know I can't expect everyone to have a jar on hand for that, but whatever. <laughs> But yeah, it's like, the way that uh, the castle is just entirely open to you is, uh, is something that I really do wish that other Metroidvanias would at least try and, like, try that as an alternative to the way the, that, like, map prog progression and pacing goes in these games. Like, still, like, still obviously provide incentives for why you should go to, like, the key points of the map, like, in a, uh, in an intended order. Because this, because this mode does that. You basically have to destroy, like, the bosses in order to get upgrades to your attack and defense. Uh, but, like, you know, if you're good enough, you could obviously forego that entire, that need to do so. Yeah, and it, like the other incentive I can think of is more like, like say if you're going like the Metroid route, where it's like it is the most uh, focused around you gaining new powers that are both the literal and uh, and meta and like figurative key to progress. You could at least make it where like okay, instead of those powers being the key to unlock the next step of the critical path. It could just be, like, the key to unlocking a series of shortcuts in order to make uh, travel through the map even faster. Especially for something like Metroid, because compared to, like, the Egovanias, those games don't have teleporter rooms. You know, you kind of need to, like, rely on, like, the routes, uh, like, just the paths that everything is already given. Kinda, I guess. I don't know, because I feel like it's not even necessarily the need for it to be like a character action game, just like anything where... Yeah. Because, I mean, admittedly, like, all this stuff I'm talking about is largely based on, like, the thoughts that I've already had about, like my idea for, like, a, a, a 2D action game that was that was basically based around me kind of confronting these sort of design tropes that I've been tired of. No, like, the, no, the idea is that exploration would be, like, still a factor in there. Yeah, but it's like... Uh, but but it's more like the uh, the 
kind of removing the need to feel like you have to explore just to figure out where the obtuse, uh, where the obtuse uh, next step in the critical path is. Because depending on how, like, a map in a Metroidvania is designed, that can be real frustrating, uh, especially if that tries to get hand-waved away as, oh, but it it's still all about exploration, just like the genre, and it's like, no, 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 it's really not. Like, like, this is a genre which, and again, like I said, is practically still linear by design, just without beating you over the head with how linear it is out the gate. Yeah, but those are obviously, like, a lot more linear, is, is, is the, is the thing, you know, they're level-based. But I guess, as, you know, I might as well, because at this point, I've more or less gone, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because, like, at the end of the day, even with the interconnected maps, they are still very much defined by, like, a chapter or mission-based structure. Like, you know, there's, like, a time limit and points and everything that they're looking for out of that. But, yeah, what I was gonna say, actually, is, um... Because, like, I've had the idea for a while, and, like... Even though I'm probably at a point where I'm just never gonna... I'm more or less giving up on the idea of ever actually making my own games just because the industry is so fucked and I don't have the money or time to focus on throwing away on a solo project. I, like, I might as well just get more into, like, the idea of, like, what I had for, like, my type of 2D action game that would specifically challenge the design notions. Hang on to it for when you can? I mean, sure, but I don't know when is the thing. Like, it, it, it would feel a lot easier for me to do that if I, like, felt more confident. Yeah. But, like, the, the game itself would have been, like, pretty much what I'm talking about, where it is just the, the core map itself is already available, and you're kind of expected to, you know, have the choice of either, like, defeat all of the bosses present and, like, gain their powers, or you, like, forego that full- and, like, pull a breath of the wild and just- and be like, screw it, I'm going straight to the final boss. But it was also, uh, the whole thing I just kinda, like, came up with on a whim, based around the fact that I've still been missing treasure, and I- and, like, that idea I had was me kind of making a justification of if Treasure had ever decided to take a shot at uh, a shot at making a Metroidvania, it probably would be something closer to like what I'm talking about. Because so much of what they've made in genres like run and gun, shoot 'em ups, platformers are like so like bucking a lot of the trends on like like, just the general flow and, like, concepts behind how those genres work, you know? Like, they, they made shoot 'em ups into something that were, like, a puzzle to solve. As well as making, you know, run-and-gun games that could exist as pure boss rush distillations. They're only a minor inconvenience. Fortunately, we are not a Mega Man. Those would be the most fatal of weaknesses. <laughs> yeah. God, yeah, now I'm just, like, th still thinking more about the, uh... About that game idea. You know, maybe... Maybe the stars will align and I will be able to, like, find the time, money, and a team to make that dream possible. But I do feel at this point... I more or less like that and like Project Obero, I think are like, like the only two game ideas I have that I'm willing to, to stick with at this point. The rest I think more or less would just be uh, stuck as uh, simply dreams for just for the sake of being dreams.
because that'd be requiring, I think, circumstances in the industry, like, to be way more different for me to be able to make it at the level I would want. So, like, one 2D game that's basically a, a like, a novel take on a metroidvania with a lot of treasure influence and then the other is a character action game that is like hey you know what was awesome the 3d shinobi games screw sega for not making any more of those okay there we go Oh, for sure. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna... Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's see, actually. I think... Yeah, we finished off death, which means, like, the next set of... Actually, I'm curious. Because I know that there are, like, some paths in this game that you have to approach from one direction as Soma in order to make it available. I'm gonna see. Is this wall still gonna be blocked or require the Wrecking Ball? Yes, yes it is. Ah, damn it. I thought I... I thought I would be clever and like cut through the top floor section and drop down from there, but no, I gotta go back down. Actually, I don't even need to drop down there. I'm just gonna go back through the floating garden and like head down that way. This should be fine. Yeah, it's like a real... Yeah, real lucky that, like, those two games managed to, like, get greenlit and come out as good as they did. Just, like, the right time, uh, like, as you said for a second, to be like, sure, you can do it, go nuts. <laughs> yeah, other yeah, nuclear hole will be left in his wake. It does get a bit annoying, I'll admit, having that L is both your dash move on the ground and your super jump. And it's like, like, I constantly hit moments where I hit the ground, but I think I'm still airborne. And instead of doing the super jump, I just dash into a wall of spikes. This was, uh, yeah, real silly. Mm-hmm. Gotta make... Gotta consolidate all your actions to these limited buttons. Though, to be fair, like, when you found a game on GBA that managed to really make those work, like, I think that's something that's, like, worth commending. It's definitely the thing that, like, you're not really gonna get anymore now with, like, traditional handhelds no longer being a thing. But with the Switch basically folding it into a hybrid model with a, with a home console. Because, like, uh... Because, interesting, like, uh, Gunstar Heroes... Well, actually, the, like, Gunstar Super Heroes on the GBA is a very interesting thing, all things considered. Because in terms of usable, like, buttons on the GBA, you technically have one more than you did when you, like, played the original Gunstar on, on the Genesis. Because it used three-button controller, that's what it was designed for. Whereas with a GBA, you've got A, B, L, and R, and those are basically, you know, four buttons. <laughs> and because of that, they were actually able to, like, make a system where, like, based on whether you were pressing, uh, like, B, R, or both at the same time, you would get different firing modes. Oh, absolutely. Like, six, uh, six face buttons all the way. That's what we really need. 
We need six face buttons, but still keep the two shoulder buttons and two triggers. And all of them have to be pressure sensitive. In or if only to ensure for future generations that games like MGS2 and 3 can still be played there in the intended way, as well as the bouncer. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, also can't forget uh, the option for back paddles. Obviously, those need to be in there. But obviously, the thing with those is that you kind of need to keep it so that, like, they, they have to be designed for, like, be, uh, that you can, like, reprogram to act as any of the other buttons. Because I think... Because, like, when you say use two more shoulder buttons, like, my solution to that automatically is to think the, the back paddle route. But even then, it's like... It's, like, less valuable to make back paddles where their inputs are something... Are for, like, an entirely different button rather than simply mimicking the, the function of another button because it's easier to use. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same here. I mean, like, when you're when you're gripping that middle prong on the N64 uh, controller, like, that's where your index finger is naturally gonna rest. It's right there. Yeah, kinda. Man. But yeah, six-button layouts deserve more respect. Funny enough, the 2D action game Metroidvania idea I had, like, like in a weird bit of inspiration I went with, I decided to, like, uh, basically map out, like, what that game's controls and mechanics would be as if it were designed for the Saturn. <laughs> So, like, the idea is, like, yeah, this is basically a game where, like, the intended method of play is with a, Sat a Sega Saturn gamepad. <laughs> like, go nuts. Okay... I, I am in full agreement, yes. Okay, maybe not with that. <laughs> that might be too much. Because because my brain demands symmetry, damn it. <laughs> oh god, see so you Oh man. Oh god I'm i I'm now just envisioning like a single big button like the A GameCube's A button. And just the remaining six in a, like, a hexagon arrangement. That is... Oh, man, that is pure chaos. <laughs> I love this. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, wait, when you said motion inputs, I for some reason thought you were talking about motion controls, and it's like, that's never gonna go away. <laughs> Which is a damn shame. Considering a lot of, like, the really good games on the Wii, I think, still stand the test of time more than, like, the most significant quote, good games of the, of, like, the 360 and PS3. Because guess what? A side grade in, like, game design conventional thinking is still more preferable to an actual regression in conventional thinking.
Yeah, portals, but like, they, I mean, it's, yeah. Like, it's the weird exception in that regard. But that was obviously, I think, for me, like, boosted by the fact that it was part of the orange box. Which was still in, like, even when it came to, like, the games that Valve... Oh, son of a bitch, I was not paying attention. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the one, it, like, out of all the ones, is the one that, like, stuck the most as far as, like, like, first-person puzzle games. Yeah. It's, and it's using, like, a very interesting, uh, wait, no, I'm not going straight to Boss Rush. What the hell? Oh, man. Oh, man, how far back am I? Ah, damn it. Well, it's a good thing I've been saving rather compulsively. It's just that, like, I had not found another save room past that. <laughs> okay, whatever. But yeah, it's like... Portal, like, in terms of, like, actual, like, game design or whatever, has more significant lasting impact for the better than the likes of stuff like Gears of War, or Modern Warfare... Uncharted, Arkham Asylum. Yeah, it's just... Then Bioshock, which... Yeah, because it's like... Because the thing with like so many of like, the games I mentioned, it is like there are clearly older, better versions of what they had like put forth. You know? Like, Bioshock is just the immense watering down of like the immersive uh, sim genre, especially games in the vein of System Shock 1 and 2. And, like, cover shooting, like, we we could already, like, keep going on and on about, like, how, like, cover mechanics for that really don't have a place anywhere else except outside of even, like, Gears of War itself. And even then, that's really only for multiplayer. Exactly, because it... God, because it's, like... Like, uh, when there's, like, that, uh, successful, like, formula that's been discovered that, like, se that seems to stick. It's... Like, I get, I get, obviously, there is, like, an immense difficulty that comes with developing games, you know? Like, on a lot of fronts, you know? Like, obviously, the art stuff takes a lot of time, especially to make it, the graphics be as good as they are. But also being able to, like, design gameplay systems and have them work. But man, it, it's really evident with, like, a lot of the really popular games, especially, like, on the Western side, where it's, like, when something's seen as a formula that works, like, all the effort from other studios goes straight into not coming up with their own, like, original or unique, uh, like, uh, takes on, like, gameplay or whatever. It's mostly just on trying to find a way to copy as much as possible without being full-on plagiarism. And even then, you still get some games where they clearly just go the route of full plagiarism, like the gameplay in Dante's Inferno. Like, oh good, you just did God of War again, but worse. Oh, yeah. Especially when it's, like, in Mass Effect 1, it becomes real apparent if you decide to do more than one playthrough and realize that, on average, two out of those three dialogue options, they just give you the exact same line. Just the, the inferred tone is supposed to be different, even though it's the same recording. Oh, yeah. Like, going from 3 in New Vegas to 4 on that front was real. I'd say it's fine for Mass Effect up to a point. And I think that point was right uh, before going into Mass Effect 2. Because the thing about how the dialogue options in ME1 worked was that... Even though it was like using that dialogue wheel as like its big new innovation... 
The way it was used was still not that dissimilar from how it was in any other computer RPG or Western RPG up to that point that had dialogue options. Because the idea was like, Basically, outside of, I think, one, maybe two instances in Mass Effect 1, Shepard only speaks when the dialogue wheel prompt is there for you to make a decision. Whereas, you get into 2, and especially in 3, they took away a lot of that agency and feeling like you had control over when and how Shepard would say things, and it started to become less of a player avatar and more... The, the designers, the, the writers of the game, trying to basically make a default canon character out of Shepard. That was always my biggest problem. And like those and especially the wrong lesson that ends up getting taken from the uh, from those dialogue wheels with the much more terse options. And even, like, for games where, like, I find them better than the more popular and polished RPGs of that gen, like, Alpha Protocol, that's an interesting game where it's, like, it doesn't need a dialogue wheel, but it does do a lot of the, uh, the more terse options. But instead of choosing what specific line you say, you choose the tone, which I feel is, it's still, uh, obtuse in how that, in, like... Like, it, it provides a bit less depth in, I, and control in what stuff you, your character can say. But at least uh, by selecting a tone, I, I can see how, like, that gives the writers a bit of an out to write your main character to essentially say the things that are relevant in order for the scene to work. It just changes how they might go about, uh, like, saying the things that need to be said. Yeah. Yeah, I can... I can definitely, like, see that. It's just... Yeah, like, if, if you're going for something that is, that has a lot more depth of options, you really do need to have the mechanics to, like, and systems to really reflect that. Which a lot of, uh, like, the, the big quote-unquote, in, quote, innovations from, uh, from 360 PS3 Gen just, like, don't really satisfy those. Oh, man. But yeah, f uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, like, my point still stands, and also extends to fuck the haters, the Wii was good. Like, the amount, like, just because of there being way more, like, shovelware that was in the spotlight doesn't deter the fact that, like, there were still good games. Because surprise, surprise! Any system that is, like, the most popular and gets, like, the most support, uh, like, games are always, by default, going to get the most garbage. Like, there's no two ways about that. PS2's the greatest system ever, but man, just look through any bargain bin, like, PAL-only release and it is the some of the most dire things you've seen in your life. Yeah, that is very much the case. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's it's design shortcuts, and it become and it is so like evident even more that that's the case when you look at how much like a lot of devs just try and like outright copy as much of the core framework of a game that was popular and was successful. Because that save, because like, they look at that and it's like, well, this is proven to work, and this saves us a lot of trouble in having to come up with like new gameplay mechanics and ideas, so we can focus on all these other things. That's fine to a point, but again, it's it, emphasis on to a point.
Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay. Getting ready to fight Legion. Oh, yeah. God, it's like... Oh, it's just... You know, every every now and then I think about what attitude I find more obnoxious. The overly backwards attitude of things were better in, quote, the old days. Whether that's coming from, you know, from any point of view. Be it in terms of, like, entertainment or, or political or what have you. Or do I find more annoying the constantly, like, obnoxious, forward-thinking attitude where it becomes, like, needing to modernize everything and, oh, why would you do that when it's so old? I really do not know which I find worse, but I think so on most days I'm honestly more inclined to side with the constant future forward-thinking, yeah, f yeah, that's it, full forward-thinkers are just so full of absolute garbage. At least with the backwards thinkers, it's like... It's a bit easier to just kind of, in most cases, to kind of laugh at, like, the notion and just, like, go on with your day. It's like, oh, you crazy Luddites or whatever you, you want to go by. But instead, it's like with the people that just like decry anything as all being bad. And it's like, do you like not, uh, is like, especially if it's specifically only in video games and I always have to just like challenge the idea of really, do you just stop watching any movie that is five years older from where you are now? Exactly. It would be all for the better if the rest of the industry could understand this. Oh, man. But yeah, here we... Yeah, at this point we have now... Um... Yeah. Yeah, now we now we got all the regular bosses out of the way. Guess it's time that we can go fight Graham. Okay. Hmm. All right, now let's work our way back to the top and uh, go over to Graham's room and beat the shit out of him. Oh yeah, it absolutely is. I'm always down for like talking about like actual game design. Like... Like, not even in specific terms related to, like, certain games or whatever. Just, like, the just the inherent philosophy of it all. And just constantly going on about how much, like, like the, the discussion around it, it from, like, so many people online of what is and isn't it is just so full of shit. Cause they, because they just don't know how to actually, like, formulate it properly. Okay, where do I... Yeah, I'll go here. Man, we're already doing 200 damage just from a slight kick to a zombie's ankles. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's all the same at the end. I, I agree on that. 
And the funny thing I th is that, uh, especially when it comes to discussing matters of game design like this, it just goes to show how, like, I feel like that's, uh, admittedly, because as part of my background, I did, uh, like, go to school with the intent of, like, wanting to get into the video game industry. So, naturally, I ended up going to, like, a notably, uh, you know, somewhat famous uh, institute uh, specifically for that uh, in the country. And if there's one thing I could definitely say about that and, like, how I talk about design now is that I feel like the experience of learning, like, uh, like game design as being taught in an academic sense was enough to teach me, like, not to that what they said was right, but how to argue, like, my own perspective on game design and how, no, your perspective on, on what it is is actually wrong. Because it's still, like, perpetrating a lot of the problems I feel that, like, everyone else with the industry keeps going on about. Yeah. Admittedly, I still wish I didn't go there only because I, if, if I hadn't, I probably would would be uh, student loan free at this point because I finished the rest of my school and going to a place where like I was able to like get in through certain programs and not have to pay m and not have to go into debt because of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so obnoxiously young and yet is still so profitable as it is. It's insane. True, yeah. And for what it's worth, like, even like when I went to that school for some time, there were at least still some highlights from it. Like, the most positive things I can still recall from that was finding, like, a small, like, fighting game club out uh, there that basically, like, for a brief while got me into stuff like Guilty Gear and, like, other anime fighters. And, like, I had someone to play those kind of games with, as well as uh, other arcadey stuff like Beat Mania. And then the other was, um... It was, it was nothing related to video games. It was just something funny that was that was devised by the people like in my starting year where it was like, hey, let's let's make a club where all we do once a week is watch a Nicolas Cage movie and just heckle the shit out of it. And it's because of that that I was able to experience uh, such gems as Con Air and Face Off for the first time and just subsequently lose my goddamn mind. That that was a trip. Oh yeah, and Wicker Man also. That was that was nuts. But yeah, outside of that, uh, yeah, like on on the whole, fuck that place. I don't even need to say the specific name of what it is because if you like look at like specific colleges in the U.S. that are designed for what I talk about, which is like. Specifically teaching stuff to prepare for a job in the games industry. That narrows it down to a very small list. Ugh. <sighs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I did see face off. Though I think if you were to ask me um of the of like which which of the the two that I like more, that and fate and Con Air, I am I am way more fond of Con Air and its particular brand of insanity. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to beat John Malkovich as a villain wielding a 
Saturday morning cartoon as hell name as Cyrus the Virus. And Steve Buscemi being, like, uh, playing a character who's uh, feared as some Hannibal Lecter-esque uh, villain, even though he's kind of an alright guy and gets off scot-free in Vegas. I suppose, but it's like the insanity I think still kind of overshadows the parts of it that are legit that like make it a legitimately great film. Mhm. Mm it is at the very least an amazing, an amazing achievement in uh, the conceit of having your actors pretend to be the other actors who are also pretending to be the actors they are pretending to not be. Because that, because that movie is not about Nicolas Cage pretending to be John Travolta or John Travolta pretending to be Nicolas Cage. It's about Nick Cage pretending to be John Travolta, who's pretending to be Nick Cage, and then vice versa with John Travolta pretending to be Nick Cage is pretending to be John Travolta. Yeah, it's just it is so absolutely gleeful in in just the wild ride it is. It, it's 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 inspired casting. There's like no two ways about it. Hey, look! This is almost like Dracula. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you like. Yeah. You just gotta learn to, like, love and accept uh, the stuff that just decides to go so absolutely crazy. Okay, I should probably start spamming... Grand Crosses. Okay, yeah, because I... Hmm. I took quite a lot more hits than I was... Willing to. Oh dear. I gotta be very careful now. I'm I'm calling serious time on this. <laughs> oh fuck Man even when you kill all the bosses and get those like attack uh, up bonuses and whatever you still go down pretty fast. Yeah, I think it's just... I should have been... I probably should have been treating that very first phase more like a regular, like, uh, Dracula phase. Alright. Yeah, you... Yeah, but you have a good, uh, you have a good rest. I'm gonna finish this up, do some, do some, uh, playthroughs of Boss Rush, and then call it quits on my end. But yeah, it was a good talk. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Yeah. Okay, that's what I need to do. He's at least sticking to that for now. Yeah. If I just keep him in that loop, this should be fine. Nope, nope, ah well. Ah.
Oh, come on. Stop getting hit. Yeah, this is the way to do it. This first phase. Oh, come on, don't touch him, literally. Ah, oh, again, don't. Why? Oh. Okay, there we go. Now let's just spam some more Grand Crosses. No! Oh my goodness. Oh, why did I? Mm. But it's okay, I got it now. I know now how to like avoid as much damage as possible during those first two phases. So yeah, the trick I think now is I'm just going to avoid sub weapons for his first two phases. And when he turns into the big monster, just grand cross him into oblivion. Yeah, this is surprisingly a lot more challenging, kind of regardless of, of like, uh, of what stats you come in here with. Oh, you could get two hits in. Oh, that makes it a lot faster. There, you can actually get two hits on him during that. That's very nice. Ah! Ah! There, okay. Ah, come on, just stop. There we go, okay, and I still have a ton of uh, MP to work with. Here we go. Keep it coming. No! Oh, come on. Oh, no! Oh, why? Yeah! All right! Oh, those Grand Crosses helped a lot. <laughs> awesome. And that's how Aria of Sorrow actually uh, ended. Yeah, there was nothing about Soma or like the reincarnation of Dracula. It was just Julius going into clean house. That's how he rolls. Oh, that, that was good. Yeah, somehow just because of, like, even with the order I was going in with the bosses, it's like, wow. I still ended up with more deaths than I was expecting, but it's still less than it possibly could have if I were to just rush straight for Graham.
Yeah, that's a fun mode. I, I like the... I do like this game's incentives as far as, like, giving you, like, the, uh... The attack boost for, like, going through all the bosses. And the fact you can, theoretically, still, uh... Go through them in any order you want. Or just go straight for Graham. But at the same time, I do still very much appreciate, like, the extra moves you had as Richter in Symphony of the Night. Would have been nice to see kind of a mix of those things. But it makes sense, though, you know? This being a GBA game, you only have so many buttons to work with, and probably, considering how nightmarish some of those motions on the D-pad were that you had to do for, like, special moves and spells, it's probably for the best that they just stopped doing those forever after that. Okay. Uh, that's not me. You should have shown Julius. Still a good game. Absolutely great. Now let's, uh... L let's close this out with the boss rush. Which I am going to... Yeah. Do this. Because I'm not technically gone through this boss rush as Julius, so I might as well see how far I can get. Wow, only one damage. Okay. Let's keep going. Yeah, we'll grab this. Why not? There we go. Nothing to that. Wow, he stayed in just the right position for that. Three axes, nothing to it. All right, death. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to, uh... Oh, come on. Ow! Oh! Okay. On second thought, I probably should be... Yeah, honestly, I've got no reason not to pick up those orbs for, like, a free refill after each boss. It's not like I'm gonna be able to get any, like, bonuses for this. I already have to do that only as Soma. Yeah. But only when I feel there's, like, a huge significant dent in my uh, in my magic bell hearts count I guess that's the best way to put it oh yeah holy water does wonders on that There we go. Hmm. 
It's fun to get around the, uh, behind them like that. There we go. Get the axe ready. There. Now, let's get ready to just throw a bunch of grand crosses at that old death. Oh, come on. Uh. There we go. How does it still hit me on the rebound even when I am ducking? Yeah, okay, there we go. There we go. Wow, just three... Three Grand Crosses when you're right in the middle. That's not bad. That's a good tech. <laughs> oh my... Dude, will you just... There. Good. Second phase, please. There we go. And now for the final battle. Again. Oh yeah, that's right. I could still use the super jump just to get around like those extended black fireballs. Oh yeah, that's a lot more efficient. Yeah. Yeah, two hits uh, per per wave of uh, per attack. That's not that's not bad. There we go. Ah. Man, I still love how absolutely like shmup pattern inspired like the like this bit is with like the the spinning uh big fireballs and it's appropriately slow as well so you can like have a much easier time keeping it to the proper position and unlike a shmup, you don't die in one hit. Or Contra, I suppose. Actually, I guess this, if a boss had this kind of pattern, it wouldn't be too out of place if this were in a Contra game. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh dear. You know what, actually, I don't think I'm gonna be... I don't think I'm gonna continue. <laughs> like, that, like, that was literally the final boss as it is. And it's not like I could, like, there'd be much point for me doing this again as Soma, because I already got all the rewards that I wish I... that I already could manage as him. Man, a new game plus feels very pointless when it comes to Julius, unless... Unless the intent is somehow that, like, he keeps, like, his attack buffs over time, which I don't think it's gonna do. Because, like, new game plus with Soma, that just... That just resets your level while letting you keep most of your gear. So... Hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely gonna be it for now. So... Yeah. Third Egovania out of six done, and it's gonna be a bit of a while before I decide to take on Donna Sorrow and the rest of the DS games. Mainly because I'm trying to get some other projects on my plate kind of sorted than ready to go, especially with uh, especially with continuing my Steel Battalion Let's Play, because I got the intermission video and like the rest of the second campaign to post over the coming months. So as far as streams go, it's probably going to be a bit of a while before I do any more of, like, these nightly streams. I'm actually going to see about... I'm going to I'm gonna get in contact with Kaboom Dragoon and, like, see if, you know, like, if for, like, the next, uh, the next coming Wednesdays, like, a few of them, if he'd be up for doing another, like, casual LP type of stream like we did for No More Heroes HD. Because I'm already thinking of some games we could do. That would be that would be a good kind of time filler for the next uh, for the next few weeks before, hopefully, by the time we've like finished one of those games, I will have my new avatar, my my VTuber avatar, if you will. Because I because I finally, after mulling about like my options, decided to go ahead and start, you know. I start like putting down the money to to get a commission and all that so hopefully I don't have to wait too long into the middle of May for it to be ready and then just usher in like kind of like the next step forward for for these streams yeah that's that's the plan currently so that's it gonna be heading off have a good night